Howdy y'all, this is Ethan Monreal, back at it again, giving you that gay shit you love while playing some more Blasphemous. So, if you need a refresher, Blasphemous is a Metroidvania that uses Inquisition-era Christianity as its inspiration for its world, and you can kind of tell that by how happy everyone in the background looks, right? But, before I get ahead of myself, we got some plot. Sorrowful be the heart, penitent one. Welcome to Albero. Sanctuary to this humble brotherhood of the kisses of wounds. Few remain here who can still employ it, but Tirso is my name. There are few of us who still care for the sick and ailing. With devout kisses, we bless the wounds of those who seek our protection. Thus both we and they remain at the mercy of the miracle. Time outside these walls passes by strangely. In sundowns, we need not contemplate. But if your penance happens to carry you under said skies, be so kind as to bring us some ingredients for our ointments. The will in the miracles shall show you which ones they are. All right, well, it feels like I just got a quest dropped on my head, and I guess I got nothing better to do, right? I kind of don't really know what I'm supposed to be doing. I mean, Dio Gracias gave us a little bit of plot to help us go on our way, but I haven't really looked at the map too much, so we'll figure things out eventually. Anyway, I just picked up a rosary, got a dove skull. Uh, it strengthens my defenses, that's pretty cool. I'll probably check out the lore on that a little bit later, but in the meantime... So, I promised y'all I'd relate the ideas and concepts in this game to the shit I talk about normally in my videos, and I'm gonna have to try to be disciplined with that, because it's, it's a little hard. There's a lot of shit going on in the background, which is very distracting to me. But, as a reminder, in the story of this game, people use pain as a way to deal with guilt and repent for their own sins. And am I about to... Oh yeah, I'm getting sucked into a cutscene, boy. They got a lot of plot in this area, holy shit. Penitent one, you who carry the painful guilt in your cracked hands. Lend it to us and alleviate our burden. Lend it to us and wipe away our tears. Because it is an act of penitence. Alrighty then. So, to my understanding, this is kind of like how we level up. Uh, again, I haven't really messed around with this game too much, and I haven't really spoiled that much for myself either. And, oh, I can't go this way, I'm screaming. Um, I'm assuming maybe I spend points there, or I, like drop off my like holy juice or whatever they give me i guess i'll open my inventory and uh, i should probably look at that dove skull right that morning when the bonfires were lit and the convicts were raising their ghastly pleas to the indifferent inquisitors a white dove came down from the heavens and perched on the shoulder of a prisoner where it stayed until it burned with him okay well that was a thing the, uh, the storytelling and the lore is a little bit macabre, which I kind of appreciate. So I'm guessing this is where I level up my shit, but uh, judging from the, the stuff I have in the top right corner, my holy juice or my repentance points or whatever the fuck it's called, uh, I don't have enough to upgrade anything. So we're just going to have the window shop a little bit, but uh, the sacred thrust actually looks pretty appealing. I do really like dashing attacks. There's my spell and the thorn. All right. Well, we took care of that, right? Um. So anyway, I got to be disciplined with how I uh, handle this LP so I can talk about all the shit I want to talk about and actually have it have to do with the game. So we'll see if I... Uh, oh, hello. Has called upon the winch of the Order of the True Shrine. That's an unfortunate name. In this place... We gather the remains of those who were separated and forgotten, so we can grant them holy burial, as our charitable rule prescribeth. Help us these poor souls, 
Oh, penitent one in silence, the order blesses you. I guess that's also a quest. Also, imagine how unfortunate it must be to, like, have your title be wench. Anyway. So, as I was talking about before, uh, when I play this game where people kind of basically, like, fetishize pain and penance, I kind of wonder how well the healing arts are received. So, those kissers of wounds from behind, they basically... Oh... This place is neat. Interesting. Oh, I guess that's a collectible. It's not like an equipable item. But anyway, those Kissers of Wounds, they basically are healing people. I don't know if it was immediately uh, apparent from the dialogue. But again, in this game, people kind of revere pain, and they revere... I mean, I guess I could just flat out say suffering. They they enjoy to fucking suffer. Not because it's fun to suffer, but because they think that's what they need to do to kind of deal with the misery of existence, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, they're basically paying or praying for a pain to deliver them from how wretched and miserable their lives are. And it's to the point where if you've been paying attention to the dialogue, Really, they kind of make it seem like pain is kind of like a divine blessing. So, I wonder, for like people like the Kissers of Wounds, who essentially are there to heal people and stop them from feeling pain, what kind of like role they have in society. Oh my fucking god. I didn't think there'd be combat damage on that, although I guess it is a giant sword. <sighs> and... I don't really know what else to say about that. We're just gonna keep going. Uh, I guess I could talk about what's going on with me. I fucking died, Mom. She literally just murdered me. I'm screaming. <laughs> Where's the solidarity? Oh my god, I'm back here. Okay, thank you for teaching me how to dodge. Anyway, I love passive aggressive game tips. Uh, do you have anything? Do I have Time to talk to you again? These walls, but if okay, no. Alright, we're good. Uh, what's going on with me? Uh, I've become friends with my straight co-worker, which is simultaneously amusing and kind of strange. Um, I'm realizing now that I haven't really been friends with a straight male outside of the internet since, like, high school. Um, he's also kind of like almost a meme of straight guys. Like, his interests are basically like big-titty women, cars, and working out. And... I mean, I'm just like a big ol' homo, so we don't really share any of those interests. Like, I work out, but I'm not, like, into it in the same way he is. Um, and it's, it's just very fascinating. We have such different interests, and he just seems very set on being nice to me and being a swell person. So I'm actually, like, I found myself having to, like, stop myself from being, like, suspicious of... You want to stop throwing rocks at me, homie? Thank you. Holy shit. Um, find myself kind of being, like, skeptical of it, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, what the hell are you doing, bro? Like, what? Is this a trap? Question mark, question mark, question mark. But it's also bizarre because I can kind of look back and be like, holy shit. Seven or eight years ago, I would have been obsessed with this dude. Like, I, like, legit feel that in my soul. I'm, like, looking at him, and he has, like, big muscles, and he's just big and friendly, and I'm like, man, I would have fucking just wanted to ruin my life for this dude <laughs> um, when I was a teenager. And obviously, I've kind of talked about this, right? Uh, if you've watched my previous videos, um, I've talked about how when people openly and honestly show kindness, it's kind of like basically gay culture in air quotes to really be endeared by that. Um, and it's almost like a gay meme, basically, where if someone just shows you any sort of kindness, you just latch onto them very aggressively. But that's also partially a lie. So I've been saying that a lot in my videos, right? In hello, <laughs> what are you? Is that like a woman with a giant growing out of her? What the fuck? 
Okay. Oh, I got some more soul juice or whatever this is. Oh, okay. I got a uvula. That's woke. Um. What the fuck? Extra tears of atone atonement. Oh, is that what my, like, my currency is? Tears of atonement? Okay. Oh, and it has a little description here. Fascinating. Whoa, that's enough of that. Uh, I'm gonna go back to talking <laughs> because that's basically why I LP. Anyway, now I'm like actually thinking about something I want to say, so that's actually kind of wiggy. Um, but like I don't know. I'm an adult now, and I realize that what I've been saying isn't like fully true. And I mean, I've always given disclaimers about stuff like that, right? Like, you know, I don't speak for one singular gay experience. I just talk about my observations, but. I think also at the same time, while sometimes we do kind of latch on to people who show us kindness and sometimes become obsessed with straight guys just because they're fucking nice to us, I think also we're equally likely to just kind of like avoid people who are nice to us at the same time, if that makes sense. Um, and I'll kind of try to lay it down here as sharply as I can while playing this fucking game, because I, I feel like I'm going to die again and I'm... Oh, there's fall damage. Well, that's good to know. Um, I feel like this might be a little bit hard to, uh... There we go. To do. I might have to re-recruit some bra- Bro. For real? <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> I guess this gives me time to, uh, learn how to talk. Because I'll be walking my ass all the way back and I'm not cutting it out. Because if I have to suffer, you have to suffer, nerds. Um, but basically, like, I think a lot of us also kind of learn to be really skeptical of people who show us, like, kindness and stuff, just because, at least for me, I kind of was skeptical that it was, like, a trick or something, like, I was getting a big old prank pulled on me when someone showed me, like, common decency. We're gonna upgrade our weapon real quick, because I should have enough, uh... Yes, I do. Oh, good, you don't lose that when you die. What the fuck was that that I lost then when I died? Huh, I don't have enough points for the big ol' thrusty. I'm gonna take... I'm gonna take Sinful Wrath. I'm gonna take the big hit, because that sounds appealing to me. So... What the fuck was I just talking about? I'm screaming. <laughs> Whatever. I'll, I'll figure it out. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Basically, like, thinking that people who were being nice to me were fucking with me. I don't know. I think it just kind of, like, can go either direction. Either you become obsessed with people or you withdraw more into yourself because you're like, this can't be real. Um, but what that has to do with my life is, you know, now I'm an adult and regardless of how I feel about that, I'm friends with this dude. And luckily, the appeal of straight guys has kind of run dry in me. But I think what I'm talking about isn't too uncommon, and as I said, it's kind of basically the, the culture to fall for someone when given a little drop of kindness, and it's also the culture to simultaneously reject that kindness. Something I've noticed in myself and other gay people is, like, this desire to assume misery is the only option for us, and, like, a refusal, absolute refusal, I want to clap my hands, but it's going to sound shitty in my mic, this refusal to, like, really engage with this idea that we're likable and lovable as ourselves. And I think that is, like, basically, like, almost the classic gay struggle. Like, just really struggling to feel like, for one, you're genuinely likable and that you're someone anyone could reasonably love. Um, while being yourself, that's the important, like, asterisk. Because a lot of people think they can get someone, but I think a lot of people don't see themselves as a gay person being themselves, as being able to kind of, like, get that kind of love and respect and, you know, basic human interaction, honestly. Like, interaction that's peaceful and, I guess, normal, really. And I think that also a lot of times we kind of ritualize 
that kind of thinking. So, like, let me step back first. So for one, obviously, like, it's not true that gay people are unlikable. Like, all gay people deserve love and are likable as part of our fundamental being, right? Because, you know, we're human and all people are capable of being liked and loved, but unfortunately, I think a lot of us kind of struggle to feel that way. So, I see the queens, like, really work on self-depreciating as, like, an art form, which is what I was talking about before. And I see that almost as, like, they're kind of, like, peace offering a little bit. Like, they'll just start self-depreciating in public or wherever, and then... Fuck you. <laughs> Why is this so hard? Um, they'll start self-depreciating in public and basically kind of, like, give it up as, like, a peace offering. Like, look at me, I'm trash. I know I'm trash. XD, I'm sorry. And it makes me sad. So when I think about, like, the isolation that gay people go through, I sometimes kind of wonder how much of it is self-imposed out of a belief that we don't deserve love. And I mean, I know fag hatedry and violence and gender rot and all those other wonderful things that go into our backstories are real, but I also see many of us transitioning into, like, a stage where we really aggressively internalize self-hatred as, like, a ritual. Maybe it's penance! Like, in this game, I don't know, you tell me. <laughs> but, I think that's kind of like all the gender and sexuality juice I got in my head for now. This was a little bit hard to commentate over, I'm not gonna lie. Um, oh, hello, we got another uh, baby shrine. What if I just stop talking now? Wouldn't that be woke? Um, should I go? Uh... I mean, this map doesn't help me. You know what? We're going to end the video. I talked about something gay. You got what you wanted. Now it's time to GTFO. See you kids later. Bye.